So, did you wake up this morning and think to yourself, I want to make a tissue box? Probably not, but since you're here, let me show you how I use bent lamination to make this one. To make the corners, I picked up a couple packs of these really thin veneers from Rockler because I'll be bending the wood along the direction of the grain, so the thinner the veneers are, the easier they'll bend without breaking. And up to this point, I've just been cutting the veneers to their rough sizes, after which I submerge them into a tub of water to soften them up so I can pre-bend them before glue up. And while they soaked, I began to work on the form. First, I made a quarter inch template by cutting a hole that's close to the radius of what I'll be bending the corners to, followed by two lines cut at 90 degrees tangent to the curve. Next, I taped the template to a piece of 3 quarter inch MDF to produce the two sides of the form. And by using a quarter inch bit and bushing in my router, I'll end up with two pieces that will perfectly sandwich a quarter inch of material in between them. I ended up cutting a total of four sets using this method, one for each corner of the box, and these pieces will become what I call the master template. Since I want the final height of the box to be no less than 3.5 inches tall, the final form for each corner will be made by stacking 6 pieces of 3 quarter inch MDF. So I use the master templates to trace out a total of 20 more sets, which I cut using my jigsaw, staying just outside of the lines. That way I could flush them up at the router table later as I glue them up one at a time. With a total of 48 pieces to glue and flush up, this process ended up taking almost a full day. I could have used my CNC to cut everything, but it was actually out of commission at this time. It would have taken a week to get the spare parts in. And since not everyone who watches my videos have a CNC, I figure there's some value in showing the process of doing this by hand. Next, I put a layer of packing tape over the surfaces before putting the wet veneers in to pre-bend them. This will prevent water from seeping into the MDF, which could cause unwanted bumps in the surface. It'll also avoid any glue from sticking to the form during the glue up later. I let the veneers dry in the form for 3 days before removing them, and whether or not the pre-bending really helped to prevent any potential breaking during the glue up, I'm not really sure. But what it did help with was making the glue up much easier because the curves in each veneer prevented them from slipping around too much after the glue was applied. And while the glue cured, I worked on making the jig for holding and cutting the corner pieces. My thought was that the radius of the jig should match the radius of the parts to maximize the surface area for holding things together, and that's why I started with some of the leftover pieces from the form. So what you see me doing up till now is just laying out the cuts to leave about a quarter inch of straight section on either side of the curve and then making sure that the edges were at 90 degrees. And if you're looking to make this for yourself, I have links to the tools and materials I used for this build down below in the descriptions. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments or DM me on Instagram at bevelish underscore creations. I'd be glad to help answer any questions that you may have. After cutting these pieces to their desired shape and size, these became the templates which I used to make four cutting jigs by following the same steps I used earlier to make the forms. A couple days later, I opened up the form and was pleasantly surprised by just how rigid these pieces were, and that there weren't any spring back at all. So I transferred them over to the cutting jig and held things together with some tape. Using this jig will not only make the cuts much safer, it should also, in theory, make sure the edges will end up at 90 degrees after they're cut, but more on that later. Next, I set up my router table to cut the grooves along the straight edges of the pieces using a 1 16th inch bit. Since tape wasn't the most robust way to hold things together, there was a little bit of play between the workpiece and the jig, so the size of the cuts varied. But overall, it wasn't a showstopper. In the end, the most important thing was making sure that the straight edges were at 90 degrees to one another, since those are the edges that the straight pieces will connect to. And speaking of the straight pieces for the box, I milled some walnut down to thickness on my planer and then cut them down to the rough sizes at the table saw. <laughs> 
this was when I realized the top and bottom edges of the corner pieces weren't square to the sides, probably caused by the play between the cutting jig and the work pieces I mentioned earlier. But using my angle gauge, I was able to transfer this deviation over to my table saw and recut the edges of the straight piece to match the angle on the corner piece. Then I laid out the tenons by referencing both pieces against the flat surface. This is so that any thickness differences between them will only be on the outside of the box, where it's much easier to sand down. And after cutting the tenons at the table saw, I used the hand plane to clean things up until I got a nice fit between the pieces. I just repeated this process for the rest of the parts before sanding everything up to 220 grit and gluing everything together. If you're enjoying this video, I'd really appreciate it if you could leave a like and a comment below. Oh, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay up with all of my future builds. Thanks. The next day, I removed the clamps from the glue up, and as I suspected, the top and bottom edges really weren't squared up, so I decided to build a router flattening jig to fix this. There are plenty of videos on YouTube on how to make a flattening jig and how it works, so I'll spare you the details on that. But what I'll say is that this jig took me maybe 15 to 20 minutes to make with some scrap MDF, and it wasn't just really easy to flatten both the top and bottom edges of the box, it was also really easy to control the amount of material I had to remove. Once the top and bottom edges were flushed up and sitting flat, I used glue and some of the dust from the flattening operation to fill in the gaps between the joints. And once that's done, the hardest part is pretty much complete. Next up is just working on the white oak top and bottom panels. I started by tracing out the shape of the interior perimeter on a piece of quarter inch MDF, and then cutting out with a jigsaw, staying slightly outside of the lines, and then finally coming back with an orbital sander to finalize the shape until I got a nice tight fit. This piece will ultimately become the template I'll use to cut the top panel at my router table using a flush trim bit. At the drill press, I used a Forstner bit to cut two large holes and then connected them with two straight cuts using my jigsaw. This creates a large opening for accessing the tissue paper. In order to keep the panel flat, I made a couple of battens that will be attached to the bottom side with screws, before finally gluing the top panel to the rest of the box. The bottom panel will be slightly undersized compared to the top panel since this will be removable. I'll be using magnets to hold the bottom panel to the box, so at the router table I cut some mortises for housing the magnetic strips in the bottom panel. After squaring up the mortises with a chisel, I used some 5 min epoxy to glue in the magnetic strips. With the bottom lid complete, I cut strips of wood at the table saw to make shelves for holding some magnetic buttons on the inside of the box. Once the pieces were cut to size, I drilled some recesses into them for holding the magnets, once again using 5 minute epoxy to attach everything. And finally, I glued these shelves to the inside of the box, using some spacers to keep things level. And with that, the project is complete, and I want to give a big thanks to the guys from Modern Maker Podcast and Rockler for putting together this challenge. I've actually been putting off this project for almost a year because I just wasn't comfortable with making those corner pieces. And I'd probably put it off another year if it wasn't for this challenge. So I guess the takeaway here is get out of your comfort zone and try things that make you uncomfortable because that's how we learn. And once again, this is Alex from Bevelish Creations. I hope to see you guys next time.